Hey everybody, appreciate you being here. Uh, I'd like to start off by saying continued thoughts and prayers with um, Utah football community, family of Aaron Lowe and whatnot. Thoughts and prayers going out to them during this difficult time. Um, that being said, very thankful to our fans, especially the student section coming out on Saturday, giving us a tremendous amount of support um, and right back to work prepared for our second conference game this coming week going on the road to play against an excellent Stanford team. Uh, that being said, open questions. So James Kripia from the Oregonian. Mario, your thoughts on how you guys can go about improving run defense as a whole uh, going up against a Stanford team who I realized last week didn't have its full stockade of running backs, but generally speaking, relies pretty heavily on the run game. Yeah, they pride themselves on physicality. They do a great job, multiple personnel groupings, big, strong, physical, they knock you back. And we've got to continue to improve our physicality and the way that we play the run. Sean McPherson, KWVA. Coach, throughout this entire year, your team, your defense has shown a great ability to make a big play to keep points off the board, even when the other team is in the red zone. What would you attribute that to? Resiliency, just keep playing the game. You know, we've had our bright moments, other areas, other moments where we feel like we could continue to improve upon. But uh, our guys do have a tremendous amount of will to keep competing, keep fighting. Um, we come close on a lot of plays. I think it, their appetite grows stronger to make a play, and we find a way to continue to doing to, to continue doing that. So uh, I think really excellent leadership by the guys that are on the field, and uh, they're looking forward to having a great week of practice. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Two personnel questions. First off, I, I noticed a little absence in the participation report was, was Devin Williams. I'm curious if that's an injury. And then also Seven McGee being the, the, the only of the younger backs to play. Was that just something he'd done in practice? Was that uh, based on matchups? What went into that thought? Well, Devin didn't play just because he wasn't part of the rotation for the game. In terms of Seven McGee, Seven McGee and Byron Carwell and Trey Benson have all done an excellent job. Uh, it was just that particular call had seven McGee in the game. Um, but to his credit, he's been doing an excellent job. Those guys are really good football players. And I think you'll see all of them play more and more as the season goes on. Alvaro Torres, end zoners. Hi, Coach Cristobal. I hope, uh, I hope you're having a great day. Uh, well, my question is, last game against Arizona, the team appeared to fall uh, into a bit of slump after halftime. And a couple of timeouts help you close out uh, the game comfortably. Something similar to what happened in the first game against Fresno State. Do you think that uh, do you think that not coming out strong after halftime is a problem for this team, or has it only been circumstantial? Well, it was certainly not our best on Saturday, and something that we don't uh, we weren't very pleased about. We didn't uh, control the line of scrimmage as well as we have in other instances. And we didn't allow ourselves to get off the field on defense, therefore not getting the ball for very many plays in the third quarter. And when we did, we didn't do much with it. So all in all, certainly a, an area that we can never allow to slip. Um, it's been hot and cold. It's been a plus and a minus. So, but certainly we want to forge and push forward and improve that area. Julian Minnison, KZI. Mario, after the game, a lot of the guys talked about uh, sustaining that juice or needing to work on sustaining that juice throughout the entirety of the game. Do you think a, a road game coming up can help with that kind of sense of urgency a little bit? I think our guys are very uh, real and our expectations for ourselves are really high. And so it's all about sustaining performance and execution and your intensity, mental and physical intensity go hand in hand with that. Um, and it all goes back to us continuing to coach and play and work and execute with more con consistency. Um, I think our intensity, our juice, our energy has improved as the year has gone on. I think we're sustaining things better. Um, I think we have to sustain our discipline and play discipline longer in order for all those things to fall into place like we want them to. But I think that's where um, I think that's something on Saturday that we have watched on film, address, 
and immediately started working on because we know how important that is to our process. Matt Preem, 247 Sports. Yeah, Mario, uh, Kayvon was on that snap count against Arizona. Is that still in play uh, against Stanford? And I guess just how is the health of this team coming out of Arizona? Well, I think he responded well physically. I think he is in good shape to play. We'll see if he can play in an entire game. I think he will. No, no issues and no physical limitations. So it was important that he got in that game and got himself some snaps. It certainly puts you ahead as you enter the week where you can practice full throttle. Um, Mace got in there and played a little bit more than half the game and looked really well and came out feeling great. So he is now, he has a clean bill of health. Um, Brandon Swinson will still not be with us, but Keith Brown is now fully healthy. You saw him play. Um, I believe Damon David will be back in action this week as well, even if it's in a play count or a pitch count capacity. I am trying to think of who else might be in question. Please go ahead and ask me if there's someone else. But I think that sums up um, a majority of the ones that you probably had questions on. James? Just wanted to see how a couple of guys graded out on the D-line. Mario on the edges with Trevin, because obviously he made a couple of pressures in particular. It was quite effective. Him and Jake. And internally, uh, Keon and Popo, just how they've done it. Uh, creating push and, and getting a little bit of penetration when they have and, and other times where they may need to make some improvements. Yeah, I think there are some bright spots and other areas we want to keep improving upon. I think that's the best way to go about it. We don't make grades public, not for one reason or another. We just don't. I don't have them in front of me. If I did, I wouldn't mind sharing them with you. But we see tremendous improvement in Keon, you know, and Popo is now looking healthy again. So there's a lot of good play from him as well. I think Trevin deserves a lot of credit for how he's worked himself and you know, being a really good player and helping us out. Uh, Shipley has improved as well. Uh, certainly DJ is now getting more comfortable playing the edge as well. So got to set edges to play good football. If you don't know set edges, you create a, a good chunk of problems. So that's something that we certainly want to uh, continue working on and improving. And um, we expect to get good dividends this week. Thanks, Torres. Ducks Digest. Coach, this um, upcoming matchup with Stanford, one of the more you know highly contested rivalries in the North for you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you, what are some you know key strengths that you kind of see on this Stanford squad, whether that be offense or defense? Well, Stanford is a very big physical team. Uh, they're very explosive at the skill positions, and their wide receivers are just they're large guys that could run tremendous amount of speed. They got guys that could run through you, around you. They do a great job coming down with contested balls. They really do. They go over the top of guys, haul them down. You've seen them in one-on-one -on -one matchups in the past several opponents they've played. They have made some monster plays, and they got some speed to go with that as well. So a real impressive group right there. Big and physical up front. They pound you. They knock you back. Um, quarterbacks as good of a quarterback as we've seen, um, not only this year, years past. He is a guy that has complete control of the offense. He is quick and efficient with his reads, tremendous arm, accurate. He can run. He can hurt you with design plays and pulls, and he can also hurt you by just taking off and scrambling. Uh, but he is he's a game changer. He's a difference maker for them. Uh, defensively, you know, it all starts up front, and their front seven is a really impressive crew. I mean, 340 pounds at the nose tackle position, knock you back, experience. You know, at the four eyes and the guys that jump outside and play the stand-up linebacker positions, their inside linebackers extremely stout and physical and downhill. They really do. They do a great, great job as knockback tacklers to get guys on the ground. And they have um, the speed and athleticism to go sideline to sideline. Very complete team, very active secondary. You know, a, a pick. I know at least one pick six that changed the game for them when they were playing out there in Los Angeles. So if you look at their team, they're just a very, very talented team, a physical team that plays hard, that's very well coached, very challenging scheme. They use, I mean, an excess of 15, 18 uh, personnel groupings on offense to keep you off balance. And all of them possess the ability to go by you, through you, uh, around you, just a, a tremendous challenge. They are a, a, an excellent operation. Jared Denny, scoop duck on three. Hey, Mario, I'm just, after looking at film, I'm wondering what you made of Keith Brown's performance against Arizona and kind of just that whole weak side linebacker group. Rusty. 
that's the best way to assess it. He knows that he's got to get in that film room, live in that film room. When you when you when you're injured, um, you got to take advantage of every second, every second, because what you can't get physically, you got to get mentally. And I think he's bought into that. And I trust that he will have a great week of preparation. He played really well, you know, when we were up in Columbus and now, you know, knocking the rust off after a couple of weeks, he had some really bright moments and some other ones where he knows that, you know, we've got to improve upon. And so having him back to be able to practice as he did yesterday, full speed is going to make a big difference. Eric. Yeah, coach, I guess with Tanner McKee, just circling back on that, you had some very high praise for him. And I think a lot of people who've watched him have felt similarly. Uh, is there a player you've coached or coached against that he reminds you of, or, or maybe a combination of some? I'm just curious on, on more of your evaluation of him. He, he's different. He's going to play for a long, long time. I mean, he can do it all. He really is. He's that impressive. And just uh, just when you have that type of command of an offense, when you understand everything from top to bottom, A to Z, run game, pass game, protection, schemes, you know, outnumbered, outleveraged areas and how to flip protections, flip runs, all that stuff. It's uh, it's like having a coordinator on the field and he is that, and you match that up with the ability he has. It's a, uh, it's a dangerous combination, a great football player. Jerry Thompson, Ducks Illustrated. Yeah, coach, after watching the video, was there anything on a positive nature that stood out that maybe you didn't see in the game itself that may have been kind of revealed to you? Oh, I just think our team is a very resilient football team. You know, we, uh, you know, games are won uh, in different manners. At the end of the day, you start off a conference uh, play and you you win by 22 points. Um, there were some real bright spots in the run game. The turnover ratio continues to climb in our favor. The kicking game continues to improve, particularly on the coverage units. Um, some really good play from the secondary, some really good play from just different parts of the team. And and we recognize that every single week we uh, we focus on the things we have to improve. We recognize good play and certainly, you know, praise that. And then we don't over praise it, but we recognize it uh, and we move forward. But, uh, yeah, when you're one and oh, you certainly are. Are, uh, you know, you're very positive about that. And you're also very direct about the things that you have to improve upon. And we do both. And we maintain that balance. And I think we think it's important to maintain a level head and a focus required to continue to do that on a week by week basis. So that's what we're doing. Zach Neal, Ducks Wire. Coach, it looked like Anthony Brown maybe got a little bit dinged up when taking a sack there in the second quarter. Um, obviously it wasn't enough to keep him out from the game, but that makes it two weeks in a row that he's taken some hits. Um, and we know he's got a history of injury with his knees too. Um, is that something you guys are cognizant of and maybe some play calling and keeping the ball out of his hands in the run game where you just kind of hoping that he stays healthy? Um, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what the question. Are we hoping he stays healthy? I, I mean, so are you, are you, for instance, maybe calling less designed runs from him and hoping to, to keep him healthy or are you just kind of just going well, and we certainly him? don't call any place to try to get anybody injured. And that's never going to be a part of the plan. You know, everything we design and the way we play football, you know, we certainly teach the right techniques, um, fundamentals to make sure that we play the game the right way. We call the game to put us in the best position to win. If we ever feel a player is not capable due to limitations from a physical standpoint and injury standpoint, we certainly make sure we make adjustments where a guy is not put in danger. Uh, Anthony has a clean bill of health and has been doing really, really well. And uh, so we'll call the games as you know we feel that gives us the best opportunity to win while always keeping our players' health in mind. James. And certainly appreciate that circumstances had a bit to do with this, Mario, but CJ is, in terms of when he's been healthy uh, in back-to-back -back weeks, this is some of his lower uh, opportunities to, to carry the ball. How And this week ahead, he's been a tone setter for you guys, in particular against Stanford, and given what they are presently dealing with by way of run defense, how important is he to setting the tone offensively against a, a Stanford team, uh, who, again, who he's had success against in the past? Well, he is always a very prominent in setting the tone. I think a lot of our players are. He's certainly one of them, as is Travis. Uh, the play count, I think, last week affected his touches more than anything. I think that's the best way and the true and transparent and honest way to assess the situation. So he's a great player, critically important to our operation, and he'll continue to do great things for the Ducks. Gordon Williamson, Oregon Duck Football News. 
too. We certainly don't see you get angry a lot on the sideline. I, I, don't, I can't remember a time where you've been so angry uh, like you were on Saturday. Just wondering what your feelings are overall about reprimanding a, a student athlete on the sideline. And maybe if you, would you go back and maybe do that differently? Um, With Chris? I, I'm trying to hear, I, I heard a little bit towards the end. I didn't hear your whole question. Can you repeat it, please? Yeah. Hold on, I'm sorry. I should use this. We haven't seen you get angry much on the sideline. Mm -hmm. At least I can't remember a time where you were so angry like you were on Saturday. And I'm just wondering after you looked at the tape, is that something maybe you wish you would have done differently or what's your, what's your perspective overall about reprimanding a, a student athlete on the sideline, just in general? My perspective is that Chris and I have a real relationship and a real agreement with accountability standards. And that was a big play that hurt the team and it required a strong and intense verbal message that reestablished our accountability standards, clarity on that. I think that was achieved. Um, I respect Chris, he respects me, we respect the process, we can't hurt the team. Uh, I trust him, obviously, we want to get him back in the game with a clear mind to attack the opportunity to go win the game. And that's what we did. And that's what I did. Max. Coach, uh, I believe we saw eight different players make catches for the team on, on Saturday. Uh, some big explosive plays with Jalen red. Um, you know, just my question is, you know, do you think that having an established go-to number one guy could kind of help this team or this offense? You know, how do you evaluate the wide receiver play? I think you evaluate every opportunity you have to go win a football game and doing whatever you can to win that game. I think storylines created around, um, I don't know, anything other than doing whatever is best to win a game from a strategical standpoint is all secondary. Um, we always try to spread the ball around as much as we can because that is effective in helping you win a game. Um, and if you win, you you really come out of there not having or not trying to have any regrets. You just assess how you can do it better. And that's really our process is I don't think we um, there's not much focus on creating storylines or anything of that nature. Everything we try to do is for the players, for the program and to win the game. Matt. Yeah, Mario, their tight ends every year are always a pretty tough matchup. And just I guess what are you seeing from their group at tight end and I guess your guys that are going to match up with them, I'm assuming it's probably going to be your linebackers. Well, they, they always, like you said, they have great tight ends. They're big, they're physical, multiple personnel groupings. They use their fullbacks really well. Also um, those guys understand the game really well. They do. They understand leverage. They understand how to block you, how to use their hands. They're also athletic enough to be detached the wide receivers and, getting open sets and hurt you in the passing game also creates a matchup problem. So I think you see it every single year from Stanford. You see that their ability to recruit these jumbo athletes that are just really, really explosive and athletic with great ball skills, they're, they're a challenge. They're a challenge, and you have to be able to match these guys up with your very best to do your best to limit the explosive plays that they make with them. So tremendous opportunity for our guys. Last question, James. Mario, you played a lot of guys on the O-line uh, again. I uh, was just curious after uh, looking back at things, I think it was might have been the most work, certainly for Sala, I believe also for Jackson. Uh, but just given where things are uh, and, and certain sacks allowed the last few weeks, how you uh, assess the group as a whole, but whether guys like Sala or Jackson or Dawson are putting themselves not just in position to play, but maybe even compete for uh, and, and take over starting roles here uh, this week. Yeah, Sala is really... Week after week, Salah has continually just gotten better and better and played really well this past game. Jackson had some snaps in there and continued to improve and progress. We're always going to keep the competition up front alive and play the best guys possible to help us win. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate your time. Okay. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you guys being here.